Endless fields, clean transparent air, sunsets and sunrises. These are Tarkhani. Here, for the first time, the quiet charm of hilly steps, country roads, and light birch copses opened up to Lermontov's child's gaze. Tarkhani is the country of Lermontov's childhood. This is the place where the character and the worldview of Lermontov or his outlook began to form. Everything that Lermontov saw in Tarkhani, everything that surrounded him, was then rethought and reflected in his creative works. Lermontov's grandfather, Mikhail Vasilvich Arseniev, learned from the famous agronomist and gardener Balatov. Therefore, this estate was built according to all the rules of architecture and landscaping of that time. The Tarkhani Manor was completed by 1820-1830. The central estate with the central park is located on the Cape, which is bordered by three ponds. This is the upper mansion pond, the middle pond, and now we see part of the lower pond. It turns out, well, such a unique peninsula. This house was remembered by Mikhail Yurevich Lermontov. He wrote about it. The manor house was similar to all other manor houses, wooden with a mezzanine, painted with yellow paint. In his poem, Sashka, that he finished here in Tarkhan in 1836, Mikhail Yurevich Lermontov gave a literal description. Along the walls, the columns rose and rose. Balcony hung like a cage between them, surrounded by a transparent lattice. And above the glass doors, the transparent curtains were visible. The people of the 19th century were people of faith. Faith united them. There is a separate prayer room in the manor house. Here, before the icons and faces of saints, all of them bent their knees. The owners of the house were the Lermontov and the yard peasants who served this manor house. Next to the figurative room was a room for servants. As the old timers said, the courtyard girls affectionately met little Lermontov, sang songs to him. They told him the tales about the Volga robbers and the Don Cossacks. The entrance to this room was separate, and the atmosphere was significantly different. In this room of the manor house, you could see the household items made from birch bark, which were used in the late 18th and 19th centuries. A part of the hut near the treasury with the chamber was called the back corner. The proverb says, they live in the corner and rent out the chamber ovens. It was a family space. There was a chest here, and a cradle was hung on the achap. Achap is a stave, usually made from birch. It symbolized the way that the newborn came into this world. Therefore, many popular beliefs are associated with this custom. And in general, the number of children a family will have was estimated based on the number of branches on the stave. The name Tarkhani was given to the village by the craft peasants living here. Earning on quit rent, they peddled reselling what they acquired at auctions and fairs. In Dahl's famous semantic dictionary, Tarkhan is a buyer in the villages of canvas, flax, hemp, skins, and other goods in the Tambov, Penza, and Serotov provinces. Under Elizaveta Alexievna Arsenieva, there were several windmills in Tarkhani that were destroyed in the 60s of the 20th century. According to the memoirs of the old timers of our village, and according to their drawings, this windmill that you can see now was restored. This mill could fill the whole estate and serve the village. And when excess remained, people came from the neighboring villages. Elizaveta Alexievna Arsenieva, Lermontov's grandmother, owned the estate for half a century. She was an energetic and unsurprising landowner. She grew wheat successfully, so then later could sell grain at the most expensive price. The heyday of the construction of estates began under Catherine II with the issuance of the Nobility Freedom Decree. They elevated the manor organization to the rank of high art, summarizing the achievements of architecture, sculpture, gardening art, and agricultural science. 
There were certain tea drinking ceremonies. If you came to visit as a guest, drinking more than three cups of tea was considered as the height of indecency. For tea, they paid 100% duty, so this drink was not served at any house. If there was tea, then every housewife dreamed and did not miss the opportunity to demonstrate having such a delicious dish. The tea was kept under lock and with a key, in glassware, and for a very long time, they tried to get used to drinking it properly. One of the estate landowners decided to show off the presence of such an exquisite dish. And when she appeared on the threshold of the tea room with a large dish, black grains were scattered all over it. The following text was pronounced. Well, I won't save anymore. I washed it six times, but the water is still black. And with these black grains she fed the guests, but they did not understand why the people are paying so much money for it. The Chinese, having seen our love for tea, will begin to exchange it for our famous furs. At the end of the 18th century, Paul I introduced a ban on the trade with some European countries towards Russia, including England, which occupied the Malta state. England supplied mahogany furniture to Russia. The ban was temporary, but it gave to Russia our Carolian birch furniture. Fashion for Carolian birch was introduced by Prince Mischersky. He had an entire furniture factory. There was used, of course, poplar and ash trees. But the most popular became birch, and in a special appearance, Carolian birch. It was greatly appreciated. It was one of the most durable materials. In the supplement, its trunk also has such a beautiful marble-like pattern. This attracted craftsmen, and furniture from Carolian birch is definitely aristocratic. And we see this furniture in palaces of Moscow and St. Petersburg. Of course, then it migrated to the regions. The furniture from Carolian birch and a birch achap are presented in Tarkhani in contrast as two poles, two worlds, two ways of lifestyle. In Tarkhani, these two lifestyles are harmoniously combined. Lermontov's second cousin, Akim Shangirai, noted that Lermontov was very fortunately gifted with artistic talents. One of these talents or facets of his talents is the ability to draw. It should be noted that Lermontov was not professionally engaged in painting and graphics. But in a short life of 26 years old, he created 450 drawings, 51 watercolors, and 13 oil paintings. The couple of whitening birches is the image of the motherland for Lermontov, his image of Tarkhani, the image of everything close to his heart and so much value that connected him with his place. Tarkhani is not his mother who gave birth to him, but the mother who raised and cherished him. The first image of his motherland is Tarkhani, then it's Russia. But the small homeland is Tarkhani. This is a small river in Mararaika. A yellowing field and a raspberry plum, and a silver lily of the valley, and a couple of whitening birches on the hill. These are Tarkhani. In the temporary collection of porcelain of Tarkhani Manor House, there are many items from different periods of time countries and factories. It is remarkable that in Tarkhani collection there are many pieces of blue porcelain, which harmonizes well with the color of our Lermontov collection. If we talk about the color scheme that was used in the project for Tarkhani, there are three colors, white, blue, and one of the shades of gold. This is the color of birch bark. And if we talk about the symbolism of color, then it is very consonant to the character and creativity of Lermontov. White is a symbol of purity, a symbol of spirituality. If we talk about the blue color, it is a symbol of devotion and penchant for philosophy. And the golden color is a symbol of the chosenness. One way or another, all this can be applied to Lermontov. You try to choose those quotes, those aphorisms, or thoughts of Lermontov, reflecting the breadth of his views, conclusions. The philosophy of Lermontov, the functionality of the manor, and the natural beauty of the state united precisely in Tarkhani.